I got a live lizard, y'all. In one bag. We had the the dead one still over here. I know I'm a terrible person. I don't ever sweep up this. See, that's a dead one. He dead. But then we got this this dude. Oh, look, look, look. There you go. There you go. See you, little dude. Hello, everybody. E here. Welcome back to another book review. Today we are talking about another Chad Lutsky book, Wallflower. Boy, this one hit all. The, checked all the boxes for me. Um, unfortunately, I did have a few moments when I was reading it that were a little too much for me, and I had to put the book down and walk away from it. Um, I'll tell you why in a second. Uh, otherwise, it would have been a one-sitting read. The way Chad writes, it, it's very quick, very punchy. Um, some he, He's up there with some of the best noir writers. Um, he's better than most... Honestly, he's, this isn't a thriller, but he's better than most thriller authors working today. The The word choice is damn near perfect, um, and he's just a, a new favorite author of mine. Um, this, personally speaking, is my favorite one of his books because I connected emotionally um, with the main character and his struggle. Now for a bit of story time. Um, back in 1997, um, I was, I'd already dropped out of high school. Um, I was doing a lot of odd jobs and whatnot, and I came across a a person that had heroin. Um, I don't want to get into too much detail as far as the what I what I went through to you know how we you know booted up for the first time, tied off, whatever. I don't want to go into too much detail with that stuff. But from 1997. Um, I worked odd jobs like carpeting, um, installing carpet. Actually, I wasn't the one installing carpet. I was pretty much just a runner. I went and got this, got that, got this. And we would do jobs, and then afterwards we would get high. And that went on for the longest time until finally that dude died. He passed, It wasn't even a drug overdose. It was a heart attack. That dude died. I didn't have a job anymore. But I did have a nice little heroin addiction. Um, so fast forward many, many years. Um, I did some of my best writing during that time, which I hate to say, but it's true. I and mean, some people even say that Stephen King, as soon as he stopped doing drugs, uh, the fiction got bad. Uh, <laughs> I, th I think that's funny, but I also think it's, you know, I, I think, I, I think there's something to be said about the completely different writing styles between King as a, an addict and King as a, as a clean and sober individual. I think there's something to be said there. Um, I will tell you one thing. There's a couple things that make it so much easier to put words down on paper. That's caffeine. Pretty much every writer knows that. Uh, there's cigarettes. Uh, nicotine really boosts the, 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 the imagination for some odd reason. Um, and heroin's pretty good too, as long as you can stay awake. Uh, I would write whole sections that I wouldn't remember. Um, those early days, unfortunately, it's going to sound weird that I say unfortunately, but those are some of my fondest memories of being high. Um, now, the other fond memories that I have are stronger in association to, to heroin, and that's what keeps me away from the junk. Now, am I still on, you know, a narcotic? Yeah, I'm on narcotic pain medicine, but I'm not taking enough to nod off. Um, I'm not getting high. Uh, none of that stuff. So, do I still have a, an addiction? Yes, I still have an addiction. Do I still use? Technically, yes, I still use, um, but I'm a functional addict. Uh, where this goes is not into the area of functionality. Um, <laughs> there's, a, the, there's a very, very bleak and upsetting tone to this book that I understand because it was the same the same road I was going down um, I, 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 I don't want to ask but but I mean I got to and I mean publicly if you if you don't want to talk publicly Chad I, I I understand but did you uh, I just gotta know did you were you that that that's the question because some of the details in here are far too accurate um, and of course, you can ask people these details, and you know you can get uh, you can get that kind of uh, information. But I think this has a personal ring to it. Uh, I remember Quentin Tarantino. Uh, well, actually, it was John Travolta talking about Quentin Tarantino telling him what being on heroin was like for his role in Pulp Fiction, and he said it was like downing a fifth of tequila and then going and floating on a pool. And that's pretty pretty close. 
I still don't think it comes anywhere near the actual effect of heroin, but that's pretty close. Uh, the closest I get to that kind of thing nowadays is after surgery when they give me Dilaudid. Boy, that shit brings back memories. But this, yeah, I mean, I knew right off the bat that this wasn't going to be a full review. Um, I did want to do a video on the channel promoting this book, but I also wanted to give you guys a little more insight into why this one was my personal favorite. Um, now, there's something also to be said about triggers. Um, are they good? Are they bad? Or whatever. Do we overcome them? Do we fight? Do we push? Do we conquer? Or do we let those feelings overload us? Do we let those feelings win, overpower us, and bully us around? Um, should we have trigger warnings on our fiction? I would love to talk about that stuff down there in the comments below. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. It's been another book review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. I cannot express <laughs> how difficult that was to shoot. I don't know if it came off that way. This is I'm I'm shooting this after the outro section, um, right right after shooting it. Um, I don't know if it came off uh, came across as difficult as it was to say, um, but yeah, it was it was hard to talk about. I, I I've told people about my my past and my history before. I haven't gone into a whole lot of detail, you know, um, but from. 1997 to 2001 I was strung out and I was strung out until I met my wife. I didn't talk about this section enough in the video. In fact, I didn't even go into this, but the the positive memories that I have that that overwhelm the the positive memories of heroin and that it's it's terrible to say. I know it is, but I really enjoyed that drug. My wife and my kids are the whole reason why I am no longer that way. My wife, especially. Uh, we met in 2001, and it wasn't a matter, she didn't give me an ultimatum. It was a matter of, she's not going to put up with that kind of thing, because her, well, she had some issues in her own family. She, I knew if she found out, she wasn't going to put up with that type of shit. And we met on the internet, so we, we were talking for a long time before we actually met each other, even though we lived like 30 minutes away from each other. Um, it, there was a long process going up to us meeting and I, I talked to her a lot and talking to her about her dealing with the the addict in her family and I'm sitting over here going what the hell am I gonna do about these track marks what the hell am I gonna do about you know this that or the other my my speaker turning off um, what, what am I gonna do you know um, and I really loved and cared about this person even before I met her, and I, I, I knew, I, just, some, just some of the discussions and some of the things that we talked about, it really, it, it felt like an adequate replacement. It felt like a better high than the drugs, if that makes sense. But, uh, yeah, I think I've gone on too far, <laughs> too long. Um, Chad, if you're still watching this, man, sorry I hijacked your review with a, with a, with a personal story. But uh, I didn't want to just keep on repeating the same thing about how awesome you are. Um, it's definitely my favorite book of yours. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.